In the next screen, it's going to say uh, adjust, set your white point, and you can select what kind of white point controls you have. On an LCD, it's always a good idea to uh, just use the RGB presets, not the individual RGB controls. With a CRT, we use the individual RGB controls because we had a red, green, and blue gun that individual that, that, that excited phosphors on the screen. So you could physically change how uh, each channel was uh, presenting color to the screen. So with an LCD, it's a good idea just to select the RGB preset and hit start. And now this and is now going to read the white point, white point the color the temperature, color temperature of, of this display. This display. The, the, and it's, and it's going to have to throw, have to throw patches, a couple of color. patches of color. And you'll see, and that, you'll see that, once again, our preset was 6500 and the current color temperature is 6200. Uh, that's pretty close and it's pretty, pretty typical for LCD displays that uh, by and large ship close to 6500 from the factory. So uh, when we build the profile, the reason why there's really no need to adjust your red, green, and blue here is that when the profile is built, it's going to use the profile, will load, um, it will make changes to the lookup table so that it will, it will fine tune it from 6200 and dial it right into 6500. And you'll see that at the end. So at this point, there's no, no need to make any changes, so we just stop and then go forward. This is the set your luminance window. This is important because uh, a lot of, cus a lot of uh, users will say that their prints come back and the prints are too dark, and uh, many times that's because your monitor is too bright. So, in this window, it's a good idea, once again, the, the recommended settings is 120 candelas that we've already set. We'll select start, and when we make adjustments to the luminance on a display, we're, we're simply adjusting the brightness of the monitor until the luminance level is what we want. And you'll see in the upper right corner of the screen, you have a luminance indicator, and it says that the current is 130 and the target is 120. So once again we go back to the monitors menu and select the brightness this time and we're going to have to turn down the brightness slightly until it gets into the good range and you'll see the numbers changing from 120 to 125, 123 And once again, it's going to be a case of getting it as close as possible. You'll see that when you make a change, it's going to continue to change before it stabilizes. And I'm at 120.2, and that's, that's as close as I'm going to get. I'm, and what I'm going to do, close the menu, and at this point, I'm going to click Stop. And now we've adjusted our we've adjusted our contrast and our brightness, and uh, our 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 white point is very close to the the, the, the desired 6500. So I'm going to select forward, and this is where the software is going to display, and then the instrument is going to measure roughly 80 colors, and it builds a lookup table between the expected in actual colors and that lookup table becomes the profile that's used to ensure that your display is, is as accurate as possible. For time purposes we'll just show you a few patches of color. screen you'll see a line chart in the upper left corner and what it is is the three channels your red green and blue channels 
charting input versus output and they should start in the lower left corner and go toward the upper right corner. The closer together these three channels are and the straighter they are, the better behaved your monitor. This happens to be a very well behaved monitor. You'll see the uh, color temperature, gamma, and luminance uh, measurements for this display. You'll see that the target was 6500 Kelvin for the color temperature and the current is 6500. Gamma, uh, once again, uh, target 2.2 and current is 2.2. And you'll see that the luminance level, that the target of 120 and the current of 121.0 are very close together. Um, also in this screen, you'll see that there's a monitor name. And the monitor name, by default, is gonna be the the monitor in the, the current day and if you'd like you can change this name to whatever you want it especially if you're using like an external monitor you might want to name it uh, accordingly to the model of the uh, display you're using maybe uh, but again that's you can edit that if you'd like uh, I'm just gonna I'll, I'll just use this monitor name as uh, uh, the one I'm gonna save this as you also have a, a monitor reminder that you can either activate, and by default it's activated, or deactivate. Uh, I'm gonna keep it activated, and I have it set for every four weeks. An LCD is a very stable display, as well as a, a laptop. Uh, they're both very stable. A CRT is not quite so stable. So an LCD, you can, uh, you can, profile every four weeks and it's unlikely you'll ever see a difference in uh, display profile for after four weeks. Uh, in a CRT on the other hand, would be, it would be wise to profile that once a week because they are far more prone to drift. You also have a before and after button that when you select the before and after button, you can select calibration off or calibration on. When you get to this screen, it will be displaying this woman along with this color chart with the profile turned on or utilized. You select calibration off to turn off the profile. So when it says on, the profile is actually not being used. So think of this button as saying, turn the calibration on and turn the calibration off. So when you select calibration on, it will turn on the profile. When you're done, and, and once again, it should be an improvement when you assign the profile or turn on the profile. So when you're done evaluating that, you can go back to the summary screen. Once again, the profile is named when I select and I have my reminder set to what I want it and when I select finish calibration it's going to tell me that the monitor profile named what I named it was saved in the directory C window system to 32 spool drivers color that particular folder is where display profiles will have to reside in order for your operating system to utilize them on a Mac, it's going to be in the library color sync profiles. And you just simply select OK. And the profile is being assigned right now and used by this display so that your, your monitor is now as accurate as possible.